I've been wanting to have a go with some pewter for a while. I had had a little test a while back just doing a simple pour mould, but I wanted to do a proper piece in pewter. So in this video we're going to be going through casting and moulding this pewter statue. My fiance has recently opened her first tattoo studio, so that's why I've actually built this. And it's quite a major achievement for her, so I wanted to mark the occasion and some form of statue or trophy seemed appropriate, so this is what I came up with. I'm not quite sure where the idea came from, but I found myself a few weeks ago wondering what would happen if I poured some molten pewter into cold water. I wonder if it might give me some interesting shapes that I could then incorporate into a sculpture. So I spent some time in the workshop heating up some pewter, dropping it in, seeing what happened. So as it turned out it wasn't quite as exciting as I thought it might be. I did find some interesting shapes that might be useful in a sculpture, but they weren't quite what I was looking for. So that got me thinking, what else might work if you poured it into water? So I decided to have a go with melting some monster clay in the microwave. So I'm just pouring some of that in as well. So this is quite interesting as well actually, although probably not useful for this project, I did get some quite interesting organic shapes, so I think this might be quite useful if I were doing some form of creature or something with lots of organic sort of shape to it, because uh, there's some quite interesting shapes here that I think would be very very difficult to just sculpt from scratch, so I'm going to keep this little collection of uh, melted bits of monster clay for a future project. I think what I was really looking for was some form of liquid type um, shape, so something that could perhaps be a floating ink or something like that, but that would be in a solid form. So what I was hoping was that I could capture something quite flowing and organic that I could then build into the sculpture that I wanted to make. So I started trying a few other materials, so in this case I'm trying some solder, and this sort of worked, but the pieces were too small for my purposes. So I then moved on to some thermoplastic and you're typically supposed to use this by putting it into hot water to melt it and you can then shape it. So I wondered what would happen if I melted this stuff and then poured that in. So what I found with the thermoplastic is that it would actually float on top of the water and as the water sort of rippled the thermoplastic would take on some of those ripples so this was actually the effect I was looking for and I've got a few pieces here which actually have some nice smooth ripples which I think are going to be really useful if I incorporate them into my sculpture. I also got some other interesting shapes here as well and I don't know quite what this is but it sort of looks like some sort of I don't know organic sort of fungus or virus or something so I'm going to hang on to this piece it's quite delicate but I think it might be useful in a future project as well right so I need to incorporate these pieces into a sculpture so what I'm going to do is start sculpting my basic form over one of these clear plastic egg shaped domes that's just going to give me a base to sculpt against so I've got two pieces of thermoplastic here so what I'm going to try and do is incorporate these into the sculpture and I've got to be a little bit careful with this because the thermoplastic is actually quite delicate and quite thin so I need to be quite gentle as I do this because I don't want to destroy it Now in order to give it a bit more strength what I'm doing is putting some super glue on the back of it and just spraying some activator onto that to uh, kick it quickly. That way I can build up a thicker layer uh, behind it and that should hopefully give it some support as I sculpt. Because this whole thing is going to be one solid lump of pewter and it's going to be a mould of it, I need these pieces to be a little bit thicker than they are so I'm just bulking them out at the back with some monster clay. Now this is for a tattoo studio after all, so I figured I would do a skull. And the idea here is this is like ink flowing into the shape of a skull perhaps, something like that. So I'm just cutting down my clear plastic egg shape here, so I've got just the sculpture ready for moulding. So 
So all I'm doing is attaching this to a wooden base and I'm giving it a layer of aluminium tape so that the silicon has a smooth surface to rest against. I think it'll probably stick to the wood if I don't put this down. So what I also need to do is create a bunch of channels to allow the air in the mould to escape. So what I've got is some plastic sprues and I've just cut these into short lengths and now I'm attaching these to the edges of the model all across. So the idea being that when I pour the pewter in all of the air can escape through these channels and that should allow me to get a nice cast. So I'm now just building a surround out of foam board. So you can't cast pewter in regular silicon because it's too hot, but you can buy silicon that's specially made to take those sorts of temperatures. So that's what I'm using here. It's a little bit different to the regular silicon that I use um, in that it's quite quick setting. So I need to move quite quickly once I start mixing this together. Now I was a little bit worried that I wouldn't have quite enough silicon to do this so just to the side you can see that I've cut up an old silicon mould uh, that I'd made to have a go with some pewter and I want to push those pieces into the silicon that I'm pouring if there isn't quite enough to cover the sculpture. Now as it turned out I needn't have worried because I had exactly the right amount of silicon so that was a bit of luck. So that's now set so I can now pull the mould off the base. So what I now need to do is to cut the silicon to free the sculpture. Now this is easier said than done. Um, I mentioned this is different to the regular silicon I'm used to using. and It's actually tougher. It's got a higher shore hardness rating so um, it's a bit tougher than the regular stuff. So that means cutting the silicon is a little bit less straightforward simply because it's just got that much more resistance to it. So it's a bit of a slow process but I've managed to free the sculpture in the end. So what I'm now doing is just pulling out those bits of sprues to clear my air channels. You do often get to keep your sculpture but this silicon's a little bit tougher than the regular stuff so not this time. Okay so this is my first attempt and I'm not quite sure this is going to work correctly but um, it should at least show me where all the pitfalls of the mould are. Right, so here's my first casting, and as you can see, it's not quite right. It turns out the crucible that I had is a little bit too small, so I actually need a larger crucible to get enough pewter to fill the mould. Uh, the second thing is it's also quite pitted, and it's got this weird sort of texture on it. Now, I watched some videos online, and it turns out what you need to do is to actually put some talcum powder into the mould. Now, this is something that you can do, uh, and it's not just for pewter casting. I've seen people do it for other types of casting as well. I think the theory is that it allows the material to flow more smoothly through the mould, uh, and that stops you getting air bubbles. So I'm going to do the same here, so I'm just chucking some baby powder into the mould. Uh, maybe not quite that much, but um, at least I've got good coverage. Right, what I've also done is to build this sort of um, holder for the mould as well. What I noticed on my first pour is that the mould was deforming slightly and opening up a little bit. I think that's just the heat of the pewter deforming the mould slightly. So I've just made this little structure to hold things in place while it sets. So as I mentioned the crucible I was using was a little bit too uh, small so what I've got here is a small frying pan uh, and this should do the trick. I think if I do a lot of this I might need to invest in some form of uh, heater to do this. Blowtorch works well enough, it'd be good to have something a bit more purpose built. What I have done for this is to create a pouring spout just by whacking one side with a hammer just to um, give it a little bit of an indent. Right, so it's gone in well enough, so I'm just going to give it some time to set. Okay. 
Okay, well at first glance that's looking pretty promising, uh, but problem straight away, of course, this isn't resin, so you can't just easily snap off any pieces that you need. So this block of pewter on the back of the mould is going to prevent me getting the uh, sculpture out, so I need to cut that off. So it took a little bit of work to free this, but um, here we go. And I can just snip off where the pewters got into the air channels that I created. Right, so there we go. So it's quite striking the difference that the talcum powder made. As you can see, there's a clear difference in colour, but also a difference in finish as well. So um, that's, yeah, that's looking pretty good. So I've given that a little bit of a polish just to brighten it up a bit and what I now need to do is put this together into an actual statue. So what I've got are these tiny tattoo machines, you can get these off eBay, they're only a couple of quid, but I think they should look pretty good attached to the sides of the sculpture. A bit difficult to hold but you sort of get the idea. Whoops, lucky that's made of metal. So what I'm going to do is use a brass rod as a support. and I'm just uh, drilling a hole through that and then cutting in a screw thread so I can screw these two pieces together. Okay, there we go, it's looking pretty cool. So what I now need to do is to attach the tattoo machines. Now I've realised that these little uh, pegs can actually come out, so that's going to be a pretty useful mounting point, I think, so I can just feed a bolt through that into the back of the sculpture. I don't have a lot of space to work with on the back, so I'm not going to kind of screw through it into that. I've managed to drill a shallow hole, so what I'm doing is just putting a blob of super glue in there to hold it in place. Then once that's in the position I want, I can just add further super glue to properly secure it. Super glue does work pretty well against metal, I think, as long as the pieces aren't too heavy. Um, small pieces like this are fine. I think a blob of super glue does the trick pretty well. So now for the second one, and I'm just cutting a small hole with the Dremel. So I've made myself a base just out of a bit of old pine from a desk that I pulled apart a while back. And I've cut an edge into that with a router and just added a bit of Danish oil to give it a nice finish. And what I've also done is also cut a screw thread into the end of the brass rod. So that should serve as a decent support stand. So I can just screw the bolt in there and then add a bit more super glue to the back just to fully hold that in place. There's often a bit of give in the sort of joint. So once you've got an actual mechanical attachment, a blob of super glue just helps uh, keep that all together. Now I must admit I did actually get a bit excited with this one. I cast it and put it all together in one evening. I was sort of anticipating it being a few days but I could sort of see the end in sight so I just started working on it and uh, managed to get there. So that's my first proper attempt at pewter. One thing that did occur to me, it might be quite nice to try and get some sort of heat treatment on the metal. You know how steel can sort of get that rainbow pattern um, when it's heated? I wonder if you can do the same thing for pewter. It'd be quite cool if you could. If not, you can actually get some airbrush paints which sort of simulate that effect. So that might be quite a nice effect to do on a piece like this. So I may try and experiment with some different finishes for future projects. Uh, but for the time being, I'm quite pleased with how that came out. And my front side was really happy with it as well. So um, that was really cool. Uh, mission accomplished. So um, I think that's it for this video. So um, thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be posting videos on future projects, so if you'd like to keep up with what's going on, please do subscribe. Alternatively, you can visit my website, which is www.thedarkpower.com, or you can find me on Facebook, just search for The Dark Power.